All right, so we all know at this point that the future is having a metallic cylinder thing instead of an ear. And so in our journey into the future, we need to know how to track a head or an object in this case. As you can see here, what I've done is I've just taped this weird black cap thing to the side of my head and it's got a bunch of little pieces of tape on it to track and I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to work. As you can see the light values are kind of changing and the perspective is changing quite a bit but it actually ended up working out pretty well. And here are some secret settings that I used to get that to actually work. Now, first of all, what we want to make sure is checked in the tracking settings is the normalize. And what this does is it kind of accounts for changing light values. So especially for this spot where everything gets completely different in color, that's pretty important to have checked. Now, another really important key to get this to work that I discovered was changing the motion model. By default, it's set to location. So that's usually just a single point that's moving right or left or up and down. It usually doesn't take depth into account or rotation or scaling. And these motion models are basically different algorithms for Blender to discover where a certain point is. So if you did a good job tracking with the location model, the information that Blender gets from that is not that different from if you used Affine, for example. The only difference is that Blender might acquire the information of where that point is in a more accurate way, and tracking could just be generally a lot easier. So I knew that these points were going to be rotating and changing in location and scaling a bit since they're going a little bit away from the camera. And so when I started tracking, I set the motion model to location, rotation, and scale. And I actually ended up running into a fair number of issues that would pretty quickly lose it as soon as the head turned and the perspective kind of warped the shape of these tracking markers. And then later on, after I spent quite a bit of time trying to get that to work, I tried the affine model. And the really cool thing is, this works really well. So what it does instead of just tracking the location and rotation and scale is the actual tracking marker will warp with the tracking point that you're tracking. <laughs> That's a lot of tracking. But if I track this forward by hitting E and track markers, you can kind of get to see exactly what this does. And since these are square tracking markers that I have in the footage, it kind of helps Blender understand the perspective of what's going on. But holy cow, you can just track these and it just, it just works. <laughs> it's so cool. The only downside is when you're resetting things, you kind of have to reshape them in four different ways rather than just one way, but it still saves quite a bit of time. Okay, smoke elements. They're super handy for adding life and depth into a scene. They're looping and seamless. You can grab these guys for free, and there's a link in the description.